These activities were all directed toward examining the lake for signs of marine life and pollution. For example, this water sampler was used to test water content at varying depths of the lake. Each of the girls got to try using the equipment and then examining what they found with microscopes that they were all given. It's called a dredge. And, and the reason why it's called a dredge is because it's used to take bottom samples. And the reason why you take bottom samples is to get an idea not only about the kind of animal life that's at the bottom, but also they use it for soil uh, sampling as well. So if there are contaminants that are in the soil, then you can, you can use these kinds of apparatuses to get water, I mean, soil samples at the various depths. Okay? That's good. That's good. I didn't mean let her go. Oh. <laughs> I gotta let her go. <laughs> One of Marla's main goals was to show how mankind affects the environment and is affected by the environment. To do this, she engages them in an exercise called Dragonfly Pond. Dragonfly Pond is a game where you, you create a town around a body of water and you have to decide where you're going to place a bleach factory and single family homes and a uh, fire station and a gas station which may have uh, tanks that leak underground. And uh, the purpose of this game is to show how the constant input of toxins cannot be removed. And we let the students create the town uh, without too much input from us. And they usually feel very accomplished that they've decided, you know, the best place to have all these things. And then we pull out a, a second map to point out that there's a town downstream. And the town downstream is going to catch everything that they've just rid their town of. The problem is, you figured out everything so that you would have your fire department in the right place and source the water where you wanted it. benefit for, uh, for these girls uh, in particular is that they can devote more thought not only to their place in their community, but in their, their place in the larger community of, of society. And uh, it, it drives home how these things affect them, even though these, these topics and concerns may seem far away and may really seem to touch other people's lives they're really very much a part of it. And after they participate in a game like this, this becomes clear to them that, hey, I'm, I'm one of the people in one of those, those buildings. You know, I'm, I'm downstream of another town. And uh, some of these girls on this trip were uh, pregnant. Uh, some had already given birth. And... Uh, so I, I think this is an especially important realization for them. At the end of the day, the girls were asked to write down their thoughts and impressions in a journal. It's hoped that this will enable them to let the experiences of the day sink in, 
so that what they've learned will be carried with them instead of left on the boat. Dear Diary, right now I'm writing in my journal about I'm on board a boat. We're out here taking pictures, sampling water, and looking through microscopes at algae and copepods. The captain talked to us about sea life and marine world. Then a guy named Benjamin told us about the process of how little fish eat the little shrimp and etc. Think about where you are now, where you want to go, and how can I get there? And know that there's going to be obstacles. several obstacles that, you know, are part of the larger obstacle of, of our existing societal structure, and that is that they're going to go back to uh, situations that are not encouraging, uh, that will not make it easy for them to even begin to accomplish the goals that an experience like this may spark in them. And, uh, you know, some of the girls did express the concern that how can I go back to where I was before? and uh, you know, they, they have to be provided with continuity. They have to be provided with uh, a means of channeling their knowledge and their concern so that they are not frustrated. Uh, if we make students aware of environmental issues and we don't provide a way for them to act on these issues, this will just compound their frustration and add to their feeling of hopelessness. So I think... Um, the most important solution or the biggest solution to this is to provide continuity. And by doing that, we will be drawing students into becoming active members of society through this type of education. So it's, it's almost like a work-study program on a much larger scale. They're contributing to as active member, members of society as they are learning and they're doing it in an age where it is critical that they feel confident, critical that they feel they have worth and have something to offer. So um, there really is no one, one simple answer or one simple solution, but a, a series of connected solutions.